nine, eight. You want the experience, comic culture, and sales. Streaming live daily to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Hello everyone! Hey Robbie, it's Monday, April 15th. We're here. Hope your taxes are done, everyone. Are you guys still doing this? Yeah, we are. Robbie, you have a future. Stop wasting your time with this. Same to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's had a wonderful weekend. Let's give a shout out to everybody that's here in the chat, starting with what's up, Jewish Dragons. Ron Shepard, Preston. Damn, Preston's when here. you're on Ron's text list, you get images of like the best stuff oh, texted dude. to your phone, man. He just got a commission of, oh God, um, not Suicide Nun. I can't think of the name of it now. Warrior Nun? Warrior Nun. He just had a commission done. And I got to tell you, <sighs> I flip my phone over, I look at this thing, and I think, Man, Ron's got to be happy with this. Cool. This thing is gorgeous. What's up, Elvis Cardona? Got one of your sketches on here tonight. Always wonderful to see the artist nice. here. What's going on, Corey Rust, CJ Design, Mr. Easy, Robbie again. Ruben the Collector, what's going on? Triple B. Marcus says is here. Lorena is here. Sheldon is here. Our producer Jay is here. Commander of Beef is here as well. I Look hope, at those claim I, forms. I it's hope not, Jay is here. Otherwise, no one's pushing these buttons. Yeah, it's not just me. Don't worry. Uh, Robbie, what's up? Form. TMX, Skunk's Not, Steve Vendetta. There we go. We're all caught This up. is the first time I've seen an image of Robbie in like four days where he wasn't standing next to Rachel Lee Cook. Oh, I know, that. right? <laughs> I was going to say, you look on his face. I open it up, and there he is. With Josie and Josie and the Pussycats, and I'm like, man, Robbie's gonna make me rewatch this movie, isn't he? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great it's show. Worth today. watching, I mean, man. Worth watching. I love that. There's a small group of movies that came out around that time that I absolutely loved, and most people trash those movies. I love Josie and the Pussycats. I love the Lost in Space version they did back then, and nobody and, and people bash those movies. 2001, 2003, the best. Um, the best convenience store dollar bin movies you can find. Yeah, you know what they really are. They're not like I never thought they were going to be like Academy Award winners, but I'm like, these are the things you leave on TNT. Cold clocking classics. Yep. Dodge what's crazy ball. about what's crazy Ready about ball. Josie? So Josie was like a commercial failure when it first came out, and it's garnered this huge cult following because the movie is actually an incredibly smart movie that's kind of very much ahead of its time. In fact. It laid a lot of the groundwork way back in 2001 for what they 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 did with the Barbie movie, actually, I think. So kind of plain, exactly one, right? Yeah. But, but also it, having a serious I, message, right? Like the message about the media uh, kind of like controlling you, right? This is a message that even now well, I don't think a lot of people are ready to take. That message popped out in the Wayne's World movie, too. Like, it's a ton of fun, right? And everybody quoted the movie, and it's very 90s. You know, I remember it came out. Everybody loved it. But the message in Wayne's World was was kind of serious. Like, look, man, terrible people working for terrible corporations are ruining the music and video industries. And I think a few years later, you had a similar, I won't say exactly the same, but you had a similar message in Josie and the Pussycats. Like, look, man, this is, you know. Are, and I tell you what, it, it took everything. Cats. It took everything I had, John, not to make the entire panel about Josie and the Pussycats, man. Because <laughs> yeah, I would have yeah. got a whole hour. <laughs> we have questions from uh, a Robbie from Alabama, and he would like to know. And Robbie's just asking. Next, question. next question from Robert. Robert, uh, what's up, Phil? What's up, Lars? Man, guys, don't worry. Rex is okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will say no. Rex hasn't left the show. Um, I will say that. Before we get started, Josie and the Pussycats, I think to a certain extent, informed the Archie people 
that we can do more than they had been doing for 50 years beforehand. I think it let them start to see their characters. As- I mean, when did Riverdale start? I don't think I mean, we wouldn't have Riverdale without Josie. I don't think we'd have Riverdale without Josie. And I really think we would not have had uh, Afterlife I mean, cause, with Archie. Because what was the last live action adaptation of an Archie before Josie? Sabrina the Teenage Witch was a comedy. Yeah. yeah. So Josie was more drama showing that, yes, these Archie characters can be done in a serious setting. And I think now you're at the situation where you look at what Archie pu- publishes about. 40, 35, 40% of it is not traditional Archie comics. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, and they still Archie they still do really well with the digest and everything. So that's that's always cool. They got the old school alive, they got the new school, yep. they're doing what they're doing, and more power to them. And I just want to say Rachel Lee Cook was such a sweetheart. She hasn't aged a day. She is so amazing, so sweet, so kind, so courteous and gracious. I have nothing but like you know how they are always like never meet your idols. Because, yeah. you know, like, and I, I've had a crush on her since like 1998, y'all, right? You know what I'm saying? And I was nervous. I'm sweating up there. I'm up there moderating the panel with her, but she was just so awesome every time. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have had Robbie's that list. Robbie's quote unquote list is all people from movies and television. It's, uh, it's, uh, what's your name from, uh, Chucky? Oh, God. I can't oh, Fiona Doris. Fiona Doris. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's. A, he's got a whole list of these people, and I'm just like, all right, man, I, I'm there. I, I get it. I, you know, if I had award-winning hair, that would be my list too. Robbie smelled her hair, Corey. I don't know anything about that. We don't. She I just saw a picture great. of her and Robbie the con. That's all. She I smelled said. great. She smelled great. So right, we got I a ton of books. We got a ton of books this week, Robbie. We got a ton of dynamite stuff coming out this week. A lot of fun things coming out, including a major new series. But we'll get there in a second. Let's show off our giveaway for tonight. You're giving them stuff again. I'm giving them stuff again. Don't tell Nick. When when I see when I see you packing your bags, I'll be like, oh, Rick, Rick Nick wants to check inventory. Well, then the give, <laughs> well, the, the, then the giveaway will be Alex. Alex. Hey, um, who who needs? We, we, we need a hashtag. Who needs a CGC submitter? We have a spare uh, yeah, one. That's true. We need a hashtag for tonight. What should we make the hashtag? Robbie, you should choose the hashtag tonight. How about Monday. EXP Josie? <laughs> there you go. EXP Josie, J O S I E. EXP J O S I E. All lowercase, please. Let's In do a hashtag. And Rachel Lee Cook. <laughs> Could have been RLC, nice. but no. Um, EXP Josie will get you in. What are you guys going to win? How about Invincible Red Sonia number one? This was the Gem Mint exclusive. Yep, only available at Gem Mint. This is a very cool cover. I forgot to write down who the artist was. Is, is this the one that his daughter did the art on? This might be the one his daughter did the art on. Uh, I was going to say, is that I don't remember her name, but I kind of feel like Robbie's right. Uh, hold, please. Let's see. Survey says Jade Hope. Yeah, that's his daughter. Yeah, that's, that's I think Jim Mint's daughter, right? That's his daughter. Yeah. Oh, that's that's there you go. She's so. a very talented artist, and I believe this might have been her first cover. She may have done another one, but I'm not 100% certain. There you go. So, EXP Josie will get you in the running for this giveaway. We will do this at the end of the show. One. Uh, so that's what's happening. I'll tell you, she, as, for, Lord. as someone who did not have a ton of cover experience, she kind of really hit the mark in Sonia. And I have to tell people all the time, Sonia is not a character, should not be drawn like a character from the nineties, nor should Sonia be drawn like the ultimate fighting champion. She's somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? And I think that she did a very good job of, dude, <laughs> I'm joining you over here. Keep going. You can't so stand to be you, Alex can't stand to not be on the screen. That's funny. No, I, I was realizing that that as we're getting a lot of images up, so might as well see us talk about these images. We have a lot of cool books tonight. Yeah, <laughs> John, I, I, John was like, "What are you doing, bro? Are you trying to smell me?" <laughs> no, my name is Alex, not Robbie. When you win five awards, then you can sniff, bro. Until then, <laughs> until then, exp Josie for everyone. Um, Oh anyway, my God. what are we so, gonna start with? Have a ten comics for uh, fifty cents each. 
Ding, ding, ding. That makes sense, right? I'm not pushing. Sense. I'm not. I'm not pushing you away. I'm just saying hello. CJ, Alex. Alex likes attention. What? Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. How about the Dynamite Ten Pack Reader Set? Nice. You know, how, you know what that is? I've sold one or two in my past. Good. It's <laughs> ten books at fifty cents each, guys. Ten books for five dollars total. Guy has forty dollars worth of books for five dollars. Seriously, these are a sampling of great books, all ran dynamite titles. We'll put together a sampling, uh, a sampling platter for you. Of you know, what we should titles. try to do at some point, maybe when we get closer to Halloween, we should try to put together a dynamite ten pack. We can do that too. You know what I mean? Because I just, yeah. I just finished rereading uh, Fred Van Lenty, who I pester, one of those creators I pester constantly on social media. Uh, 16 parts over three different series. Uh, very cool. He included some characters in there that I really like. That I wasn't sure you were going to see any of. I don't want to do spoilers for people who haven't read it, but uh, well, the Dynamite stuff was very cool. If people request a book, maybe we will uh, fulfill their request for these packs. We can't give you a whole story arc, you know. No, but I think it'd just be cool to get a couple in there. We so could definitely, people... I mean, at least for this pack, I mean, we can definitely maybe have a special zombie theme pack yeah. or, uh, but if time on my 10 pack, $5, 10 books, if you guys want them, let me know. And go yeah, we got to do mystery monster packs around Halloween time. That's what we got to do, right? Like I all like monster stuff. and horror themed, you know, Elvira, Purgatory, Lady Hell, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. No, I, I have a little stack somewhere. It's a monster mystery. Y'all can use that. Yep. How about Dynamic Forces grab bags? How about three books for $5? These are all random titles from the 90s, some 80s, some 2000s. All are 9-0 or better. Um, yeah, the passing of Trina Robbins last yeah, year. Yeah, I didn't know, if, uh, I didn't know if, if Nick was going to come in and wanted to say something about that or not, but we'll probably... Talk about that at some point. Hold on, hold on, guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what we're supposed to do, Jay, when it happens. It's funny. Hello. Yes, no. Are we still here? It is. Uh, <laughs> Move around for me, guys. Move around for me so I can see. Oh, hello. There we go. Okay. There you oh, are. Well, okay. Kind of. Really? Where did you lose us? Where did you lose where did you, us? Where did you lose us? <laughs> they lost us at, hi, everybody. <laughs> we were just talking. What's up, Sam? We, we were just talking and we didn't know anything happened. So where were we last? You were doing the three pack. Okay. Okay, so we didn't miss too much. Okay, cool. So uh, let's show it one more time, Mr. J. Guys, three books, five dollars. A random sampling of books. Most are '90s, some are 2000s or uh, '80s. All are high grade, nine or better. A good sampling, good readers. Give them the, give them away for gifts. Give them away for Halloween, whatever you want to do. Read them, but they're fun books. Three for five. How about seven books for ten dollars? Same same thing, just more. Same thing, just more, including cool, fun series such as Alien Worlds. As again, these are all examples, but yes, there there was a grab bag with some a, a, Alien Worlds. There's definitely a lot of fun Marvel books in there. Seven books for ten dollars. Stevie B, we'll just say this about Comcast, and then we'll move on. This weekend, I was at the Comcast Center um, watching WrestleMania and talking to the server every day at three o'clock. Their Wi-Fi skits is out for like five or six minutes, just like ours does. I knew it. And I said, really? And the server's like, oh, yeah. She's saying, if someone asks to, to check out and it's like it's like 3 o'clock, I, I literally cringe. Did they blame Rex too? No, they didn't blame Rex, but they're just like – and my thought was this. I am in the Xfinity Center. Like I'm literally at Mordor, so, so my, my, my evil signal should not be any weaker than it is right now. And I thought to myself, if you guys have this little interruptions here at like ground zero, I don't think we can complain too much. If uh, that's true, because I said, is it like every day? She said almost religiously. I mean, it's always around six ten once the pipeline gets started or 
once it's once it gets through, we're good to go. So guys, seven books for ten dollars, or if you're feeling fun, go with fifteen books for twenty dollars. Look at that sampling of titles. This is this was a random grab bag example. So this is a real grab bag that did go out. So here's a nice fun sampling, guys. Again, all high grade, cool, fun books to read. And finally, we do have the X-Men pack, which is the 20 pack for $20. And that's a dollar a book. So get your X-Men 97 fill with titles. Yeah, I mean, the X-Men is enormous right now, right? Like everything that's old is new again. Comic is, you know, we're going to get, you know, Wolverine and Deadpool. Next. You know, a buddy of mine bought one of these recently and he just did like a video about it and he like uh, shared like an Instagram story about it and it looked like a really sweet pack. Very, Wait, really? very, yeah, very diverse. Yeah, our buddy Fable, one collection down. Can so. you uh, send, send us that information because we probably want to share that because that's pretty cool. That's that's what I want to see. And again, if, if you're not like aware, like I'm a comic collector. I put these packs together for you. You know, these are packs that Again, you're getting your money's worth, but there are things that you would be wanting to say, I want to get more. And this is a good, accurate representation because he got it like an issue of X-Men Adventures. He got some classic yeah. X-Men. He got like, he got X-Men from the 90s, some from the early 2000s. Like he, it, this is a really good representation of the type of stuff Kitty you're Pride going to Wolverine get. He That's even, he got an issue of Kitty Pride and Wolverine, which I think is a severely underrated run, personally. I, I mean, think Al Milgram worked there, some of his best. I mean, well, I think it informs the relationship of those characters going forward, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you know, for, like 20, 30 years later, we're still seeing what was she, in that. She portion. was, I mean, for nineties X Men fans, Jubilee was our point of view, but you know, the eighties was you know right. Shadow Cash. This pride, is where so. she grew up a little bit, right? Had to face her dark side. In fact, I just released a video that I did a couple of years ago. You know, on Rock and Robbie Live, I do this show, this little segment sometimes called Marvel in the 90s or Marvel in the 80s or something like that. And so I recently just put up my segment that we did a couple of years ago on Kitty Pride and Wolverine. It's It grows her up. She's facing her dark side. It changes that character, evolves her a little bit. It's also a part of the Wolverine in Japan kind of storyline that was started in the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont run with Joe Rubenstein, who I got to do a panel with this week with James O'Barr. That was a great experience, too. That's two name drops. Oh, they're frozen, aren't they? Are they frozen? What's going on? I I think so. Yep. Well, maybe. Guys, can you hear me? <laughs> Hello, y'all. What's up? We're glitching on this side, so if you yeah, can hear us, we can hear you. But I'm going to talk about the X-Men because there are so many good titles in that thing. There you go. There are so many good titles. Hello. Again. Are you there, y'all? <laughs> Can you hear me? Say, say one. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It's us. Even though have, it might look have like delay? it's Robbie Glitch, it's delay? always us. Right. Is there a one. delay? Can you hear me? Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, they can hear us. Okay. We're glitching. <laughs> yeah. It's so, yeah. Monday. Happy Monday, guys. We had to get off all the internet for the weekend. Okay, they can they can hear us. So anyway, X Men twenty pack, including titles such as Kitty Pride and the X Men, Uncanny X Men, yes, the original X Men run, um, um, X Men Volume Two from Jim Lee, Kitty Pride and the X Men, X Men Adventures, X Men Adventures Number Two, Extreme X Men, um, Classic X Men, X Men Children of the Atom. Guys, so many fun titles. A dollar a book, twenty books. Does anybody want an X Men grab bag? Let me know, and we'll put one together for you. But finally, if you want all the grab bags together, we've got the grab bag combo. That is 45 books for $60. Mark down to $30. That's $30 for 45 books, which is crazy priced. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, yeah, so again, that is 40. Yes, Marcus, it's X-Men. Uh, but uh, 45 books for $30 right there. Um, finally, the last thing we have before, because we got a break soon. How about the Dynamic Forces Mystery Box? We got the Dynamic Forces Mystery Box. With with 10 base books, you're guaranteed a CGC 9.8. You're guaranteed a Virgin cover. You're guaranteed a Dynamic Forces sign book. And you are guaranteed 
a Dynamic Forces exclusive book. MSRP is $200 minimum. And John, we got these for $100 each. I mean, it literally costs $65 to send anything to CGC, one book, including shipping. So for $100, you not only get a guaranteed 9.8, but you get a virgin cover, a signed cover, an exclusive, and 10 books. This helps the two different kinds of collectors, right? This helps the collector who doesn't sell anything, right? Because they're filling up the – and this also helps the collector who maybe I've got some stuff, maybe some stuff is going to go, maybe I'm going to sell something next year. You know what I mean? Everybody is sort of – this kind of – this like a scalable thing where everybody, everybody wins. And I put these together, and like I said – there's a thing in there, a forum that so you can post on social media. We want everyone to share their boxes because every box will be good. We love it. I put them together. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you watch Triple B's show, his unboxing videos are kind of what I would like to see people do with these kind of box hits that they get from us. You know what I mean? Kind of showing... You know, I'm swiping a, right and left I, on young ladies. No, while we're I do unboxing videos, but, but what I can't do is I can't unbox my own video. I can't unbox my own thing I put together. See, you shouldn't do an unboxing video. You should do, do a, a, a boxing video. video. Hi, this right. is Alex, and I'm putting sets together. You know what? If you guys, if the next, whoever <laughs> buys, if you buy a mystery box tonight, I will do a personal boxing video of me putting it together for you. You um. I won't send it to you till after you open your box, but I'll put together a boxing video and then a boxing video. Nice. There you go. See what I did there? Anyway. I did. Uh, so those are our dynamic forces, grab bags, mystery box, and our final uh, reader set. A lot of fun books. We put these sets together for you so you guys can enjoy a lot of comics at a discounted rate. Um, so while you guys think about that, I'm going to reset the connection here and see if we can uh, be less comcastic. So we're going to go to break, and we'll see you guys in a couple minutes with a lot of cool, fun stuff. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Order BattleQuest Comics at your local comic shop today. What do you call the place on Spider-Man's wrists where the webs come out? His website. I hate myself for writing that joke, but you'd make me feel so much better if you just visited our website. We have links to our merch, new release lists, all the show info and so much more. The ExpLive.com. Did you know that Arthur, King of the Britons, and Monty Python and the Holy Grail was played by a famous Graham? Check out another famous Graham by following our Instagram.
right, guys, we're back. Sorry you guys didn't get to see what the producer gets to see. Uh, but John just got a copy of something coming up, so he's going to be very busy for the next about 10 minutes because, John, why don't you just show off what it is? I was going to say, I'll show you. Um, Here's a preview for three weeks from now. The very first week of May, Robbie, is what? The very first week of May is free comic book day. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, it is. And, and here's one of Dynamite's offerings. What is it, John? John's so happy right now. Absolutely love this. Chris Samney cover. Uh, Joe Casey doing this book. Well, I don't think you know this, John, because you just picked this up. But let me just show the audience really quickly what this book is. So, you guys, this book is more than just what you see. This book is more than meets the eye. This is Johnny Quest. Okay? If this is going to transform into something. Ready? <laughs> So this is Johnny Quest issue number zero, which is its own unique story, which is different than issue one that's coming out. This is the prelude, okay? Also, it has a preview of Thundercats number one, in case you did not pick up and you want to check out the first issues. And it also has a preview of Space Ghost as well. So you guys get to read Space Ghost. So Warner Brothers, the three for one triple shot in here, Johnny Quest zero. Thundercats one, Space Ghost one, but Johnny Quest fans, this is issue zero, not number one. This is new content that is separate than issue one. So. Very cool. Very excited for that Johnny Quest book because we had Joe Casey on the channel not too long ago, and he brought this up. In fact, it hadn't even been announced yet. He made his exclusive announcement on Pop Culture Philosophers that he was doing Johnny Quest, and he talked about how excited he was because he grew up a huge Johnny Quest fan and you know when somebody cares about the property they're really sure. going to deliver their all especially when they're already as talented as someone like Joe Casey. Uh, Marcus we're gonna have all the Space Ghost books uh, release day uh, not, ne not next week because next week Jeez. is the uh, 24th uh, the week after that is May 1st. That is when we'll have Space uh, Space Ghost. Johnny. Oh, no, we'll have Space Ghost, number one. Yeah. Um, and we'll have all the books then for Space Ghost. So It's going to be a busy uh, week, y'all. The release of Space Ghost, Free Comic Book Day, May the 4th, Cinco de Mayo, and then Rockin' Robbie's Birthday. Coming all woo! up in the same week. Let's do it, y'all. Come It'll on. It'll be crazy. So let's start with the newest incentives that have just came out. Uh, assuming we're good to go. If not, we'll jump over to another section. But let's start with Deadpool, Volume 10, Number 1. This is the 1 in 25, Ryan Stegman. 1 in 25, Ryan Stegman uh, for Deadpool. This is the brand new series by Clay Mann. Um, if we have to go to this section later, we can because I, had, I uploaded the pictures a bit late for the incentives. Um, but uh, they're still good. Throw up that gif of the cat pounding on the keyboard that's Jay right now trying to get those images. Yeah, okay, right. it's, it's my fault. I, that, I thought they, I did my normal process and I sent an empty an empty message, not messed with pictures of them. So I sent them. Uh, but we can uh, take a pause there and go back to that in a second. Um, let's go to Dynamite's books from last week. These were books that Dynamite came out last week. That we're going to show that in case you guys missed, this is your last chance to get them from us. Last chance to get them from us. Uh, so we'll, we will start with, and uh, Jay, if you could show the giant images of all the books together, just so everyone can see them. How come whenever you go to the screen that has the producer chat, it's just a middle finger emoji? Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> not it's to Jay, it's, it's just me and Jay going back and forth at y'all. <laughs> That's These guys are awful. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the love. Um, <laughs> let's start with Hercules number one. Disney's Hercules number one. So, yes, perfect. So, guys, this is your final call that we have. Again, I mean, as long as the books are as long as the books are in stock. After this week, we should still have them. But this is last week's books. So this is Hercules number one. Cover price is $4.99. The foils are $9.99. The foil virgin is $29.99. And the virgin, the limited virgin, is $50. So this is Hercules number one. If anybody didn't get a copy of Hercules, let me know if you want one. 
and we will put you down for Hercules so you can pick up the issue of Hercules. There you go. Uh, we also have uh, Thundercats number one, the third print. Thundercats number one, the third print. Uh, the first print sold out. The second print sold out. So there's two offerings for Thundercats one, third print. Cover A at four ninety nine and cover B, which is the foil at nine ninety nine. And why did third print come out this week? Because issue number three of Thundercats also came out this week. So here are all the cool, fun covers for Thundercats number three. And there's definitely a lot to choose from. Uh, but the Thundercats three, uh, these are going to be four ninety nine each this as well. Um, what uh, this one? I, yeah, this should be a shirt. That's pretty. I mean, it is a cool cover. I mean, David Nakayama is doing such a cool job. Plus, the Thundercats logo in the back just looks. I actually have a shirt with just the Thundercats logo in the back, but I'm thinking, you know, like a black shirt with Thundercats logo. But I'm thinking this would be really, you know, more color, more. I like this. And each character will be on the shirt. You could always buy the comic book and just staple it to a shirt and wear it. You might, not be able, you, might, you might not be able to watch it. That's my Johnny question. That is an option. Uh, so how about Thundercats number three? Thundercats number three. Uh, that is, there you go. That's Chitara. Cover A. If anybody needs a copy, that is cover A of Thundercats. Uh, we have other covers available, but if anybody missed out last week, we did a ton last week. Just watch last week's video, and they're still available. And I'll tell you, if you want to see a very cool Chitara cosplay, unofficial because there's no cosplay covers for this. She just did it because she loves Thundercats. Go find uh, John's Gracie Instagram. cosplay. John, John's Instagram. No, it's Gracie. No, it's not on my Instagram. It's on her Instagram. Okay. Uh, she just now Gracie is cool. Yeah, Gracie just she she really did it just because her and her daughter were watching Thundercats. Oh, that's awesome. It had nothing to do with you know people assume oh there's going to be a cosplay cover. I'm like no, that's not. You know, that's not official or anything. Literally, she did it because she wanted to do it for a con. That's, that's, that's amazing. Um, how about Jennifer Blood, Battle Diary? Robbie, if you go to war and need to write down your, your thoughts in a journal, where would you write them? In your Battle Diary. No, nah, I'd use Facebook. That too. Jennifer Blood, Facebook. I'd use it. Battle Facebook. <laughs> battle battle, battle book. Facebook or hate book. Battle MySpace. So here are the covers that are available for Jennifer Blood. Number five, Linsner, Lyrics Lee, Robert Carey, and the Virgin Linsner. But if anybody else, if anybody wants the full series, one to five, we could pull the full the full run for you so you don't get left out. Again, guys, we are the publisher. We do have the books as long as they're available. If you want to read other books in this series or this run, let us know. Here are the covers number five, but we can also pull one to four for you as well. That's a good idea. Marcus asked, are there any Space Ghost variants by Bob Lee? If um, only we knew someone that knows Bob Lee. I know Bob Baton. I don't know Bob Lee. No, I'm thinking I'm just going to go next door and say, hey. Bang on the wall. Hey, quick question over there. Yeah, because the I can book. help you. All I know is Bob Blah Blah. So. Uh, do you read the blah 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 blah? Yeah, that's what he hears in the first. <laughs> that's a low blow blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that, that would be a good comic book, the Bob blah 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 blah. But now that he said that, I'm thinking how cool it would look. Bob Lee did these space ghosts. It would because I'm thinking the way he does Iron Man's gauntlets, and I'm thinking the way he uh, does you know like space ghosts. You like, know, that would be I cool. do know there's a Michael Cho cover for space ghosts, which is which homages the classic Dell style. Is very cool. He posted Looks that on great, it. doesn't it? Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Yeah, so, he posted that a little while I'm, ago, and I was like, oh. I'm almost positive that I, I'm adapting that as a foil mm -hmm. version for the website exclusive. So it would be really cool to do. Um, uh, finally, the last item my book from last week is Sweetie Candy Vigilante, Volume 2, Number 2. And here are all the covers. Cover A, which we learned is an homage to... Oh, I had it. Uh, Herbert Walker. Isn't that... Is, I think it's Herbert Walker, Tijuana Band. That's what cover A was the homage to. Okay. Um, Robbie, bring Google that. See if you can find that. Robbie, I'm, Google that. Yeah. Google. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what, that's what it's called, Herbert Walker. Um but somebody pointed out to me, so cover A is the homage cover to that. Cover B, Joe Chiota got a cool green tint. Cover C is a... Bro, I type in Herbert Walker, I get George H.W. Bush. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say. Well, I, I don't know what I was referencing, but there's definitely a... Uh, 
Is that, Tijuana album. Is that a George? It's, that's that's a George uh, Bush homage right there. Is that what you're saying? No, no. <laughs> so, some, somebody Walker. correct me, please. Thank you, Preston. For Herb Albert. Not Herbert Walker. Thank you, Preston. I appreciate that. There you go. He was going to point it out anyway. Cover C. Cover D is the Pulp Fiction homage. Cover E is the Carrie homage. Cover uh, Cover H is the one in the middle. If you like B's. And then Joe Chiodo Bubblegum Pink. I really love the carry on Yeah, so again, these are all Sweetie Candy, Vig- Sweetie Candy Vigilante, number two. If anybody wants issue one as well, we can pull that so you can be caught up. There you go. How's the book? Did you read it? Yeah. I like it too. It very much reminds me of what uh, Kamiko did. Good. Which was probably my favorite take on that. That's when I got to meet Doug Wilde and he signed... Because we had Dave Stevens do some covers for that. Uh, did not get those signed by Ugh. Dave Stevens, but I got cover one signed by uh, issue one covered by Dave Wildey, who unbelievably was just sitting at a table no bigger than this one with like two people there. And he had his own Doug Wildey sign. And nobody, I guess people didn't make the connection. I walked over and I was like, Ooh. John, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know if you know this, but Dave Stevens' books in the secondary market, like they've always been good, but. Like they're crazy right now. Like hot ten list, like, like, like crazy. Well, Dave Stevens, Alien Dave Stevens. Kind of yeah, but e- e- even even the lower end stuff is. Uh, uh, okay, Jay, we're good on that. Um, Robbie, like, did you see all this? Like all this stuff's going crazy. Well, what I do see right now is I did look up the cover that that mo- that that cover A is homaging, and I am quite a fan of that uh, album cover. I'll say that. Um. But you said Jay, Dave Stevens stuff is doing well. Of course it is. Dave Stevens is amazing, right? Yes, Jay. If it's if it's possible at all to show that Herb Albert whipped cream cover, if at all, it's, if it's not, know, it's, it's, a it. it's a little saucy. It's a little saucy. No, I mean it's it's, it's, homo- it's an homage. I mean, okay. I mean, it's not. I'll tell you what I think the Dave Stevens thing is. This is something that Neil Adams said to me about six or seven years ago in San Diego, I'm waiting online with a bunch of people to get stuff signed, of course, right? And he looks and he somebody had said something to him, oh, Mr. Adams, well, he's like, thank you, thank you. And he, he, I guess he assumed I was with that person, so he kind of addressed it to both of us, and he said, the thing about the comic book industry is the older you get, the better you were. <laughs> That's funny. Because someone's like, no one has ever seen artwork like yours before. And I'm like, yeah, there was a time where Neil Adams' artwork was sort of groundbreaking, I guess, you know, he had his own unique style or whatever. But I love this sort of wisdom there that, you know, the older I get, the better I was then. Not, not, nobody says anything about now. Speaking of Neil Adams, did you see what, J- what Jim Lee posted for his new commission rates? Jim Lee is officially adapting the Neil Adams um, sketch sketch rates. Basically, yep, there you go. So, oh, that's not saucy. Wow. Well, so yeah, I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> it's saucy so that, in all the right ways, John. That's what it is. <sighs> so Sweetie Candy Vigilante no, cover A homages that. Thank you very much. This is our last episode. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> what was I going to say? I think I lost the of thought. You were going to sell. Oh, Jim Lee. Off. Jim Lee. So Jim Lee basically said that, hey, you know, everyone knows like how busy I am. Basically, everyone knows how much his sketch is selling on the secondary market. So. Everyone always asks them to do sketches, but nobody – I don't say nobody, but not many people go, go through with it. So Jim actually increases commission rate, the sketch rate, to crazy prices, like full body, like $20,000, like a, like a head, $5,000. Well, I wonder, but, does he go to a car dealership with, like, his sketch pad, and he's like, you know, your, your, your other auto is this. Here's three sketches. But the, the thought is that, you know, the people that really want the sketches, they're absolutely going to pay for it. And J- Jim Lee knows his worth, and it's I completely agree. So I think it's really cool that, I mean, again, it's going to price a lot of people out, but the people that really do want a Jim Lee sketch now have the opportunity to get it as long as they pay for it. That's so, right. I wouldn't go crazy. But... So, that is, <laughs> so that is Mr. Jim Lee's talks. Um, I still don't think, I don't care, and I understand, I saw a few comments today about Jim Lee was, that were not kind about the rate increase. <laughs> My favorite artist still insists on setting up museum galleries at cons when he goes. 
So until Ooh, Alex Ross, that's Alex Ross. Until yeah, but get, yeah, until but, you get to that level, I don't think you're outrageous. Yeah, but I know, I know, I know. Chris, who runs his booth, and he's a really good guy. He's always fun. Oh. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, we got. I was like, when's Alex coming? He's never coming unless you in Chicago. There you go. A few years ago, Sal Albanati was doing. Um, he was signing some Captain. He was the model for Captain Marvel in Kingdom Come, and he had like a little thing where he was signing some cards from the old Kingdom Come, it was an oversized card, black and white set, and he was signing a few of them for charity or whatever, and people were, like, they didn't know who he was, and I'm like, well, that's Captain Marvel. That's what? I'm like, you know, Alex uses real-life people, that's his Captain Marvel. And it, it was sort of like, even those, it was for charity, but even those were thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's... So it. I'm like, you know what I mean? If people will pay it, and I just... Original art, everything's through the roof, and I'm super glad everybody's get, everybody's doing well. But I keep going back to what Neil Adams said. The older we get, the better we were. And one of the reasons I tell people, always buy original art now, because the price only goes in one direction. Yep, that's You know true. what I mean? It's, it's 10 years from now, it's going to be 10 years older. That's true. The Robbie sketch cover stuff is going to be a big middle finger over five awards. So, uh, we got a break in a couple minutes. Before we do, let's start the incentives of, again. I'm going to show the incentives. We'll start there, and we'll go to a break. We'll come back. And then after the incentives, we've got sketch covers. And this week's Dynamite books, there's a ton of Dynamite books out this week. Wow, I'm dropping everything. A ton of Dynamite books. So let, let's just start off with Deadpool from last week, uh, no, uh, whoa, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I messed up. Wait, uh, Jay ain't uh, got yeah. the pictures and you ain't got the books. Is that what's going on? Yeah, I, I, I put last week instead of so this week. How so. about we just do this? We'll talk stuff for a while. Send us some money. We'll send you something. And this way, we'll just you know <laughs> yeah. make it easy. For yeah, yeah. Play, play with a <laughs> play with a dollar amount, and we'll send you something for the dollar amount. <laughs> um. Okay. I don't know how this happened, but Action Comics ten sixty four. Action Comics ten sixty four. This is the one in twenty. There we go. Oh, look at that. Nice. All right. So I'm not going crazy. I'm. <laughs> oh, Jay, Jay, I'm sorry. Jay's sitting there going, "I'm gonna mess with him. I'm gonna mess with him. No, I don't have that. No, I don't have that." I, I need this, Alex. So thank you, man. I appreciate you. You're welcome, guys. Ten, uh, ten bucks on this. No, yeah. You know what? Don't don't hit me, Jay. I'm actually gonna undercut all the prices because I want to move these for you guys tonight. Our confusion is your benefit. So how about ten dollars on this one to twenty-five? Um, yes, Preston. The incentive mystery pack. What's going on? Um, yes, Marcus, in a, in a minute, I want to see what's going on here. Dave, John's reading the upcoming Johnny Quest free comic book day. Anyway, who knows what's going on right now, except me. This book is $10. This book is $10. Look at Brainiac. It's got an almost alien-esque style to it behind it. It's Ariel Cologne. Yeah, there's a real sort of, uh, so, I like this. This is cool. While I figure out what other incentives are happening, uh, we're going to go to break, and I'll see you guys in a few minutes, I think. I'm still here. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Don't come back. It's just Robbie doing stuff. Maybe. Sorry, Corey. You love comic books. You collect comic books. But even if you own a rare, expensive issue, it's still a copy. How would you like to own a piece of comic book history? The actual art pages the comics were made from. Oh no, you say. That's too expensive. Regular people can't afford that stuff. Can they? Nick Ferrucci says yes. Join the founder of Dynamite Entertainment for the original art experience on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook. Incredible art at almost unbelievable prices. Does he have some high dollar pieces for the high rollers? Sure. 
but Nick always makes sure to find amazing pieces priced for the fledgling collector. You can collect original comic art. The original art experience. Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Part of the experience. Twitch, it's not just what happens when you have too many energy drinks anymore. Check out our content over there, too. back i think uh but uh yeah the incentives are here so let's just go back to the incentives and show off action comics 1064 again if you like alien and brainiac this brainiac this combines them both basically that would be a disturbing take on brainiac actually uh a face hugger wouldn't get far but it, it does have that what, what's the artist hr giger giger, HR giger. What... i was gonna say yeah that's uh What's a Jim Lee scribble sell for? Thirty-five hundred dollars. Yes, if it's the right scribble. If it's guys, the right scribble. I know it says fifteen. Uh, it's ten bucks tonight, guys. So one twenty-five is ten dollars. This is the first action comics incentive we've had on the show in a couple of months. Um, so this can be yours for ten dollars right here. Action comics ten sixty-four. Very cool Brainiac cover. Very cool color. It also kind of reminds me of a uh, – it's very symmetrical, but it reminds me of a Mad Magazine fold-in. Doesn't it somehow? Like, I don't know why I get that I feel, vibe. I feel like the sides should connect to something. I, I get, really the, I get the vibe. Like, you clo- maybe you fold it over, you, you see, like, his face. Make sure you get this Johnny Quest thing on free comic book time. Look at this. The first five or six pages is exactly <laughs> like the show. And I Action love that. 10 I don't, I've seen people sort of – do their take on Johnny Quest, and I don't want your take on Johnny Quest. I want Hannah Barbera's take on Johnny Quest, and thankfully, that's exactly what Joe Casey did. All right, how about the next is Edge of Spider Verse? All Can right, Venom. Absolutely, Marcus. All, Mar- Marcus, <laughs> as I can. As as he buys no, no, it. I, yeah, I can. I can show. Just type in claim incentive, and I'll be able to do that for you. Oh, I like this one. Just pay it, um, guys. This is Edge of Spider Verse. This is the one in ten. One in ten. This is the first appearance of Star Spider. And this is the design cover by Pete Woods. Cover by Pete Woods. Thanks, Pete Woods. Right there. Uh, How about five bucks for this one? Wait, what's cover price? Cover price is five bucks. You know what? Let's keep it that way. Five bucks cover price. One in ten for cover price, which is five dollars. If you want it, make it happen. Uh, yeah, I figured that would that would happen. It's okay. We'll get th- we only have four more. We'll get through this, Jay, together. Five bucks. Team That's more. a steal. Um, yeah, no, this is the, this is cover price. This is first appearance of Star Spider, and this is the one in ten cover. I'm keeping this at five dollars. Anybody that wants this tonight, um, it's a good price on a first appearance of a brand new Spider character. So. Don't sleep on this book. Don't get shot in the space. I know, isn't it? Buren Buren. <laughs> uh, that, that's uh, that's Jonathan Lau, I think. Um, Lars Man claims. So Lars Man claims one at five dollars. Awesome, Lars Man. Um, how about Jay? How about we show the one in twenty-five and look at this cover? This cover is beautiful. This cover is by Marco Mastrazzo. <laughs> One in twenty-five, Marco Mastrazzo. We have this for fifteen dollars. You heard very me, dynamic right? pose. Love the colors and the composition. Very interesting. This almost doesn't look like you know what I mean. This doesn't look. They're almost again at that edge where it's hard for me to see how this is art yeah. because the colors and you know the it's just so vibrant. I love this. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels shiny, the retro. Reflection of 
everything. The one in, the, in the building glass. It's very cool. Absolutely. And so this one is the one in 25. We got this for $15. It's selling around $20. It is a pretty cool Spider Gwen cover. So we'll take five bucks off. $15 on this one tonight. Elvis is right. This is a great cover. Yes. What are you going to do Elvis' cover? It's coming up. Is it? It's coming up. How about the one in 50? Ooh. Yes. That's Tony Daniel. One in 50. That's Tony Daniel. I have this at $40 all week. It's still selling around $45. But you know what? Tonight, for you guys on this Monday, how about $30? Oh. Yep, you heard me. This is one of the covers of the month. This is definitely one of the covers of all time. This is Tony Daniels, 1 in 50, Edge of Spider-Verse. I'm not kidding. Look what it's selling for, and then come back. We have this for $30. Do Limited you time. like lightning? Do you like rain? Do you like Miles Morales? Do you like Miles Morales standing in the rain with lightning mm -hmm. behind him? Then you need this. Seriously, Tony Daniel. Dwayne wants one. This one is 30 Dwayne. Do you like wet superhero costumes oh, oh that are God. statically charged? <laughs> Do you like static shock standing ominously off cover? <laughs> that would be a cool connecting variant, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we only have one of those. That um, is a good grab. It's just like we only have one. Finally, what is he crouching? That's a good question. Finally, what's Venom crouching on? How about what if Venom? This is number one. What if Venom? This is the number one second print. One in 25, Paolo Sequera. What if second print? Sorry, what is Venom? Number one, second print. One in 25, Paolo Sequera. It's been $40 all week. So if you guys watch tonight, we'll do the same thing. We'll make it thirty dollars, guys. This book is really great. No, not many people ordered twenty-five copies of the second print. It's just a fact. I'm telling you that. Um, not very many true. people order this book, and it's got a great space at the bottom for signing. Like this is a cool book. It's only thirty dollars tonight. Um, this yeah, is a great cover too. Like if you're a classic, is. old school, like Bagley Larson era Venom fan. This has like a lot of Bagley energy in this. I like this. Oh yeah, for sure. I love it. It's a little like, like, like you turn this it's like it's like down. McFarland, but with the tongue, because you know McFarland didn't like to do the tongue, right? So it's like yeah. McFarland with the Bagley tongue a little bit. I love it. I almost feel like we could turn this upside down. This image, McBagley, would still be cool, right? Dude, when I first McBagley. saw it, I thought I thought it was upside down for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. There you go. No. See, it works either way. It works. You can also turn it upside down again, and it looks great again. There you go. Now, uh, so it is tonight, thirty dollars. To the great people watching, if you guys want it, claim it. We'll make it happen. And those. There we go. Hey. Yeah, there you go, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, the price does not Explain flip. Explain to the publisher that it's better this way. Uh, unfortunately, the price does not flip. Um, what would the inverse price be? It would be it would be three cents. That's one one thirtieth. Unfortunately, guys, it's thirty dollars, but it's selling for forty dollars. So that's a very cool cover. Yeah, and like you, you said, a very this? rare, a very rare one in twenty five. Not a lot of people would have ordered this many. Not a lot of shops yeah, what, would have that many of the second. What bit. if Venom right there? So from there, those are our new incentives. We're going to move on to our sketch covers. So let's start with the first sketch cover is Venom number one with bump -a -bump 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 Thor versus Hercules. Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza, $79.99. That is $40 a character, but you got a full body sketch right there on two characters. And a Very fight cool. scene. Guys, those rocks are highly detailed. Like, this is a really cool cover. It is Hercules fighting Thor. Who wins? Well, you if you buy it. I tell you who wins. Whoever makes straps for gods. Because Hercules and Thor, they love their straps. They're like bootstraps or whatever. <laughs> like, they love those things. What does Hercules wear, y'all? How long does that take to put on? Does he have to buckle each one individually? I've always wondered. 
He's like, I need a scarf, no thinner. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if Robbie and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you there, did, did you? There was a Marvel, like one of Marvel's crossovers, whatever. It was the gods, epic something, and this was like the centerpiece of that story with these two fighting. And I'm kind of, that's exactly what this is taking me back to. It was from a couple of years ago. But. You're talking about Chaos War? Is that what you're talking about? Chaos War, thank you. All right. Who knows when the MCU will pay off any post credit scenes? Who knows how many years till we see this? So why wait and see this on screen when you can own this now, right here? Thor versus Hercules, Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza for $80 tonight. I noticed he did a really good job with Hercules. He sort of draws him muscly in the in the almost like to give him like the Steve Reeves Hercules appearance. And I like that. How about the next cover? Batman 357 with Wonder Woman sketch by Jessica Court and Mary Anonisieza. Yes, we have another Jessica Court sketch tonight. This is 9999. Wonder Woman looking at you has you vampire Wonder Woman? Almost. I mean, she's very intense. I was going to say she's, she's bleeding. I'm, I'm trying to tell is is this sort of like from the DC. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out if this is '90s Wonder Woman when she wore that jacket for a while, or if this oh, is, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. or if it's the uh, J. Michael Straczynski one, right? Remember that run where she had the jacket too. Oh, Jim Lee. Every time he redesigns a character, he puts a jacket on her. Like he's he's got a thing for jackets. He wanted to make oh, yeah. uh, Wonder Woman look like Rogue. Well, it, it, that's sort of remember. Oh God, who was it in the nineties that put all the Avengers in jackets? Is it Steve Epting? Steve Epting, yeah. Steve Epting. Be I mean, you because have like because Jim Lee was doing it in X Men, and so they were just mimicking that, right? I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm I remember having a Cyclops yeah. action figure from Street Fighter versus X Men toy line, which was awesome. But it was a, I loved it because it was a Cyclops figure that had a leather jacket on it, and I was like, like I don't know, there was nothing cooler. In the 90s, in a superhero in a leather jacket, right? Remember, they put the 90s Superboy in a jacket, but it was always like three sizes too small. Bro, that's the coolest jacket out there, though. I'm telling you what, man. I mean, we all want that haircut. We all want that swag. And we all want that jacket. The haircut was definitely, uh, it's hard to explain. Like, I had to, a few years ago, I had to explain to my nephew, like, why he talked that way and why he looked that way. And I was like, some stories are timeless and really hold up, like the Kree Scroll yeah. War. That stuff's Other like what, stories Superboy. Are that, very in a moment. Yeah, that Connor clone Superboy that's like 93, 94. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like 12, 13 years old. I thought he was the coolest dude I had ever read in a comic, <laughs> man. Mark Simpson as, as a Kryptonian. Jacket, slicked up hair. The glasses. Don't forget, he had the little glasses on. He's a don't ever call him boy. Yeah, uh, the newspaper so legion. Well, that was Tom Grummet and uh, Carl Kessel. Carl K and they just they that was that, that, that was that was a that, that was adventure. That was adventure. Well, they did Adventures right? of Superman, which was where yeah. Superboy was. Then they did the Superboy series as well. Yeah, gotcha. Well, the second Superboy series, series the, second one, not the first one based off the uh, original show. Yeah, the '90s one, the one with Connor. Right, Connell. Oh yeah, my yeah, goodness, yeah. I love. And, and so happy he finally got a name. Carl and Tom are so good, and like Tom Grummet's one of those artists who, like, a lot of people when they try to draw kids or teenagers, <clears throat> excuse me, they just draw like smaller versions of their adults. He actually yes. like, if you look at him, like he draws them youthful, like kids. His Robin work, his Superboy work, like there's a big difference, and you can tell that this is a a, a teenager. This is a kid. Tom Grummet's one of the best at that. One of those stories Grummet does a couple of the members of Legion of Superheroes, and that is probably the clearest example of obviously the members of the, of the Legion of Superheroes are teenagers. And hey guys, how's it going? It's, going, it's not going well. Hello, Amy. It's, it's Space Ghost. Hi, Robbie. I was gonna I was gonna say, what book are you trying to steal? You can't. It's free. We, we, we need it for promoting reasons. It's already free. After that, who knows? <laughs> anyway, that's what I was thinking. This could be a DC cover. Thank you, Jay. I was trying to remember. I, I called it DC Bites, but that's not quite what they're calling it. But. Everyone having a good time? Everyone liking the video? Everyone, hope turn, so. everyone turning in uh, their forms? Their forms, forms. You know, the, you know, 
Um, the thing I gotta say at least once a show. Amy walked in and the temperature dropped because someone didn't fall out of form. That doesn't sound good. So again, just the court, ninety-nine dollars, ninety-nine cents. And if you don't fill out Thank the form, you, Amy. Amy will find you. Don't worry. All right, our next sketch is oh, the that's somebody just said it's the Wonder Woman who laughs. Oh. And I got that's very cool. Our next sketch is the one that's been featured, the one that we've been super excited for, the one that you've all been excited for. You're all ready for this. Here we go. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. The two part connecting Superman versus Spider Man. Oh, yeah. Battle of the Century. Homage cover. If you like metal, steel greats that superheroes fight in because they're not in the city, you've got Superman. You've got Spider-Man. It's supposed to be the top of the Empire State Building. That too. MSRP is $180. We have this for $125 tonight. Who wants this? this Joe Del Beato and Elvis Cardona, who's in the chat. In the chat. Look chat. at this beautiful coloring on this book right here. Guys, this is a steal at $125. Yeah. Take a bow, man. This is very cool. Guys, this is very the cool. brightness of the blues and the red. This almost seems like a Ron thing. Are so good. Ron was here. I know where he went. I don't know if Ron is still in the chat, but Ron, this very much has a. Uh, seems like this should be in your collection. This is very cool. And again, guys, a two part connecting cover. Beautiful book. Did anyone um, claim the $99 pack of Alex with a video of him curating it? No, Lars, man. Nobody claimed the uh, mystery box yet. You want a mystery box? Claim it, and I'll put the. If you have to do the video, tell Nick you need a dynamite shirt. I, I've already asked for dynamite apparel. Apparently, we didn't have any at the moment. <laughs> also, I'd be wearing it to all the conventions I go to. Um, Lars, man, if you want the mystery box for hundred bucks, we'll put you down, and I will do a video of Somebody me. Somebody asked me the top five things I've asked Nick for. Dynamite apparel was always one of them. Uh. Uh, there's going to be, I mean, I can try to put, pull together some Spider-Man stuff for you with, with the cover and the sign book. I cannot guarantee anything, oh, but I can. I, I can, I can get it <laughs> as close to Spider-Man as I can, Lars, man, with Spider-Man things. If you want that, let me know. Um, there will not be any amazing Spider-Man title in it, however, but I will do Spider-Man related things as well. If you want it, let me know, and I'll put together. Awesome. So Lars Man wants one. Lars Man, uh, That's Alex. Cool. So this this cover, video. by the way, this is like an homage to the Superman Spider Man crossover, right from the seventies, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things about that book is that they didn't feel the need to explain anything about universes colliding or anything like Superman just shows up in New York and that's where Spider-Man is. <laughs> that's I love the simplicity of it back in those there days. There really is nothing like there's no events. Now there would have to be a rip in the universe or something. Nope. It's just like they're in town for a thing. No. Uh, oh, hi. You're in town too. Yeah, um, that's it. Preston, there is no Vampirella Spider-Man crossover, but if you take yes. a Spider-Man comic and a Vampirella comic, and you open the Spider-Man comic up, and you put the Vampirella comic inside, then you have a crossover. It's just, you know, read the stories. Well, that would be, that'd that'd be fun, actually. Spider-Man meets Vampirella. You could have Morbius involved, maybe Blade. Venom-Pirella. I got a better one than that. How about non-Pirella? It's chocolate and it tastes very good. Oh. I'm sorry. Nobody knows what Snowcap's name is really yeah, are. That's true. That's true. Venom-Pirella. Get the publisher in here. We can sell Venom-Pirella. Hey, knock, knock on the wall. <laughs> Then umbrella. So, guys, again, that was um, after the first year of the show. We were told to stop knocking on the wall. Oh, really? <laughs> we have a question. Did you really? That's that's funny. I, you know, I, I tap. I'd be like, what? I'd say, "Rex, see the publisher in here," and he'd be like, "Not good." Then umbrella. No, you know we need we need, we need cup, string. Nick, please come in here. Thanks. Uh, there we go. So, guys, again, the Battle of the Century homage cover is one twenty four ninety nine. That's sixty and sixty five dollars or sixty two dollars each cover, which is a great price for that, which is cheaper than any other covers. You know what I just realized is I priced the connecting covers, which are better covers, cheaper than the individual covers, which are good, but sixty two dollars 
which is a great for one sketch cover, let alone two. The better story is Spider Man and Red Sonya because Spider Man has a weakness for redheads. Ooh. And that like leads you into a ton of jokes for Spider Man. Face the tiger, use the jackpot. Okay. The head. <laughs> head. Face. So, how about a few old sketches tonight? How about the shadow number one with the shadow sketch by Mr. Will Torres? Shadow oh, cool. sketch by Will Torres. We got this for sixty nine ninety nine. Wasn't he the artist of the uh, <clears throat> the first Superman seventy eight miniseries they did? I think he was. I think he was actually. I'd have to check. I think he was he too. Was. I love that. By the way, they could. They could charge me ten dollars a month for Spider-Man seventy-eight. Okay, that's fine. Just throw it in my throw. Throw. I'm happy. You mean to. Superman seventy-eight? Because Spider-Man seventy-eight is it would be weird. That'd be different, right? Because oh, yeah. really, right. you remember you remember that Spider-Man show from back in the seventies, man? Wait, isn't Spider-Man seventy-eight Spider-Man? Oh, that would be great. I I think what what came first? I think that was before. Wasn't it the seventies? The the American Spider-Man live action where like. He looked like Spider Man, but when he was about to use his webs, though, all of a sudden the web shooters on the front, like, like on the outside of his costume, and it he never went up against anybody with superpowers. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, robes for his webs. Oh man, I used to watch that on the Sci Fi Channel. I used to love it. You know what? The, it's really funny because you watch that stuff when you're older, and yeah, by today's standards, it's it's really corny. But it's hard to explain to someone when you were like 12, 13, 14 years old and this had gone from your comic book or some of us were reading the comics and we were reading the comic strip every day. Um, and for it to go like read it in the morning and then at 8 o'clock at night you're watching it, that was pretty wild. Yeah, we're that so spoiled now, right? Like, And I almost yeah. sometimes it feels like the excitement's kind of worn off because we've seen every comic book we can think of done on the sc big screen somehow or, some, or the small screen somehow, some form or fashion, live action. Well, right? I think that's one of the factors in the whole comic book movie downturn. Um, I think, yes, have they had some bad scripts? I certainly wouldn't argue that. But I think part of that downturn is we've kind of seen everything. I remind people, we started with Blade in the 90s, the X-Men went to the 2000s, and then we kind of had a bunch of different sort of movies, and then Iron Man starts at what, 2008? Well, we had the Fox movies that hold us over from 99. The Fox movies, the Fox movies, movies was what, all we got from 99 to 07. So you've already seen a ton of stuff. So granted, Madam Web is Madam Web, and the less said, the better. But It's Mormon time! <laughs> but the... I think to a certain extent, people were like, and this comment was made when Avengers Endgame came out, that as good as the Avengers Endgame scene is, well, what's next? You've sort of ended the story. And I think at that point, to a certain extent, that was right. Jay, They've do you tried. ever think that maybe we're intentionally forgetting Howard the Duck? Like we intentionally no. forget Blade 3? So I'm never saying. forget Howard the Duck. Yeah. No, Blade 3 is great. Listen, let me tell you something. If I want to see Paul Levesque as a vampire, I want to get my Triple H vampire on. Definitely. Dude, Plus, one of my favorite actors of all time, Parker Posey's in that movie, and I refuse yes. to admit that that movie exists. Okay? Parker Posey's in and that if you movie. if you don't think that I didn't spend five, ten minutes talking to Rachel Lee Cook about Parker Posey, you're 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 oh, fooling boy. yourself, by the way. <laughs> Peter Parker, Peter Parker, Posey. You gotta see, I gotta see what Robbie's black book looks like. <laughs> I gotta see what this black book looks like because I'm assuming it's everyone I've liked in movies for like maybe 25 year period, all sci fi channel sort of. Uh, Speaking uh, of, remember the Shadow movie? That was a movie I liked in the day. You know, back in the day before like Marvel kind of got it all together and like Sony made the Spider Man movie, Fox made the X Men movie, like. They're all we had before Blade and the Batman movies during the 90s. We had like Phantom, we had Shadow, we had like those things kind of carried the torch for a little hey, bit. Even we Spawn. Had, we so. had Steel. We had Steel. We, 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 that's Spawn another one we Batman. forget about, like Blade 3 and Howard the Duck. So <laughs> they've been trying. You Shaquille. They've been trying for Shaquille Steel. Why do they get? Why can't that happen in the man? Like, why couldn't that be one of the Mandela effect things? Like, oh no, there wasn't a Steel movie with Shaq. <laughs> there was a Genie movie with Shaq instead. <laughs> Kazam! Kazam did exist. It's really big. Um, how about the, the next sketch? If you watch Shaq, he does not take himself too seriously. 
every I, I mean I watched Shaq do like insurance commercials and Pizza Hut commercials. Yeah. Obama. That's it. Shaq is does not Shaq likes to work. There's there's a universe where in 1999, the Godzilla movie that was made was not Godzilla. The one with Matthew Broderick? Nope. Yes. But in 1999, there's a universe where that Godzilla movie was Godzilla vs. Barkley. Ooh. I remember those Riding commercials. Off. I still want that comic book. It's gotten way too pricey now. Right, used to right be able to have the of Shaquille O'Neal's blockbuster win in, in Steel. They decided <laughs> to green light Shaquille, um, Charles Barkley and Charles Barkley versus Godzilla. And Commander Beef, you're right. Dark Man is awesome. Sam Raimi movie. I'll tell you this, though, Alex. There's a, there's a reality out there. Right, where David Lynch did Return of the Jedi, right, and Tom Selleck was Indiana Jones. I wonder what that reality's like. Huh. Magnum PI Indiana Jones. Anyway, uh, I like this. I, I like this. Uh, like this uh, tangent. Um, how and about George Uncanny Miller did Dune? Right, so George Miller did Dune, and <laughs> anyway, sorry. Oh, sorry. you know what? That's a podcast. Altered realities. Where people yeah. just sort of sit and sort of. Yeah, there's a universe where Robbie's doing the show from right here and John's over there. Yeah. With Rachel Lee Cook. <laughs> there we go. I'll take that one. Uh, how about Uncanny Avengers number no, one? No, no. There's a reality where you're doing the show in here and I'm in the other office. That's true. <laughs> That's the reality I'm interested in. Yeah, this is Black Panther by Lance Footer. Oh, this is. What? Mariano, yeah, this is a composite. So it's got photo cut out on top of it. It's a composite. This is very cool. We have this for $69.99 tonight. Very cool cover. Black Panther in the jungle. The mighty jungle. The Panther. Well, this kind of has Panther phantom tonight. energy. This kind of has Sheena energy. I like the fact that this is a real – it's very cool. And the way the panel looks, it very much has like a Tarzan comic strip energy. I, I like this a lot. Guys, this one is $69.99, Lance Footer, Mariano Nicieza, only $69.99 tonight, this bad boy right here. Finally, X-Men fans, I wanted to sh throw this out there because it's, you know, X-Men time. How about X-Men number uno, X-Men number one with... An X Men number one homage cover. If you can't afford three thousand dollars for a one zero of, of X Men one, how about picking up a sketch cover for eighty bucks? Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. Seriously, guys, right here, X Men one sketch cover. You have all six X Men right there. I love anyway. it. I, this is very classic Kirby look, obviously. And my favorite bit is when Beast is like. Hang on, gang. I got my T-square with me. Let me uh, jump into I always into thought that was funny. Like, where does that come from? <laughs> yeah. Also, isn't that the first thing Magneto would have pulled off the wall? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute. Plus, what? Angel has a missile that's, you know, made of metal. He said bazooka. If I remember correctly, isn't he carrying a bazooka or something? And what about Iceman? You know, I've got a bazooka. I've got this T-floater. I've got my telekinesis. I've got eye blast. I've got a snowball. Well, they really well he's Omega fight. level, so yeah, it's called, you know, it's of course, on. there's only one Omega level mutant on there. Two, no, there's two, two. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, Jean Grey at that point was not Omega. Well, three maybe. Is Magneto considered Omega? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'd say, I'd say he is. I mean, because according to Jonathan people. Hickman, Omega just means the highest level of power in that power set, and I can't think yeah. of anybody that has electromagnetic powers bit greater than Magneto. So he might be one. I don't know. I thought it was a special tier level of mutantism. Well, the description they gave of Magneto's powers when Jim Lee did the X-Men number one, here's basically an entire chunk of iron in orbit right over Earth's magnetic pole. And Magneto realizes, oh, I can make myself way more powerful by just tapping into the Earth's magnetic field. So now I control everything. People are shooting blasts out of me like, no, 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 no. We'll have none of that. And nobody's powers work. And I'm like... <laughs> See, Preston, I, I think that Magneto's more powerful than Polaris, right? Because of all the stuff he can do. Like, he can do things on a global scale. Like, now, the Omega level stuff, that was all kind of like in the ether for a while. Hickman finally, like, put it on paper what it means. And what it means is you have the mo like, as of like what's known right now. There you go, Ron. 
Well, What's I known right now is the highest reason. known power level of a certain power set. So like Iceman is like the highest and the most powerful of all of the uh, temperature manipulative powers. So Iceman's an Omega level, right? Or something like that. So I don't remember you get the, the, the point in the story where Iceman is almost like an elemental, right? I mean, he's doing things and I don't remember exactly who the writer was. You know, he's got, he's got Iceman when Iceman, he's got him like freezing parts of people, the water in people's bodies. And telling them don't move because you know you'll break your leg off. Yeah, um, and Eddie that, just got me thinking. Eddie just got me thinking. Jean Grey being a telekinetic, she would be one of the best pitchers the MLB has ever seen, bro. She could drop that ball whenever she wanted to. You know, it's like what a sinker, what a curveball, what a slider. I mean, come on, it's crazy. Um, Ron, there was a comic during the eighties. I can't remember the name of it now, but it was a group where essentially there's no superheroes in the world. So essentially, they used their powers to just the one, the person who had telekinesis was like a, like a baseball pitcher, and the lady that could like see the future, she was like the richest person in town because she just used it to manipulate the stock market. And I remember thinking the book, I don't think they did a few issues of it, but I remember thinking this is much more likely than what would happen. Yeah. Like if I suddenly saw the future tomorrow, I would not have an ill-fitting costume and run out to stop crime. I mean, that's her Raven. She was never a superhero, right? She just wanted to live in high school. She can see the future. Um, Ron's here. So let's go backwards, show off the sketch covers really quickly. Um, Ron, uh, that X-Men cover you saw was $80. We have a, we have a Black Panther cover on, on Avengers 1. This one is Lance Footer and Mariano. This Black Panther is 70, Ron. Black Panther is 70. We have a shadow. We have a shadow sketch by Will Torres. The shadow is 70. The shadow is also 70. Um, Patrick, the Superman Spider-Man, that one was is already claimed. That one was by Joe Del Beato and Elvis Cardona. So, um, Jay, if you could uh, show that one more time, just to show off Patrick. Guys, this, this one is, has been claimed by Ron, but this is Del Beato and Elvis Cardona. Elvis, who was in chat earlier. Great job there. This was $124.99. Um, Ron, we also had Batman 357 with a Wonder Woman sketch. The Wonder Woman is Jessica Court and Mariano Nicieza. So there's the Wonder Woman. That one is $100. It's Jessica Court. Bloody arms, cool jacket, Wonder Woman. Almost bowling esque kind of, with the pose and the closeness, but definitely not you know, bowling style. Mariano to ask Jessica. Which one? Which version is this? Yeah. Is this deceased or is this. Um, I mean, you know, Wonder Woman's have a bit of a bloody history, different points that yeah. sort of. <clears throat> Definitely. The Sewer and Spider Man cover connecting covers Patrick or Soul. Yeah. Um, finally, we have Ron. We have the Venom number one. This was Thor vs. Hercules by Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. Don't wait for the MCU. You can just watch this cover right now. If you watch it long enough, maybe it'll move into your possession. There you go. 80 bucks on that one. And that is our, our sketch covers tonight. So let's move on to something cool that we've been doing. And we're going to do our best offer at the moment. We're doing a best offer at the moment. So we've been putting these up. These have been doing pretty well. So here is our best offer tonight. Yes, you see it. It's the criminally insane Bushman. What this actually is, is this is a reprint of Moon Knight number one. The very first solo titled Moon Knight. We're going to start this at $1. Do we hit so it started at one dollar. If anybody wants it, start at a dollar. Guys, this is the best offer starting at a dollar. This is the true believers Bushman. This reprints Moon Knight number one. Yeah, Ron, those covers are amazing. This is from this reprints from November 1980. Doug Mensch and Bill Sinkevich. So you got Doug Mensch and Bill Sinkevich in this book. Definitely a great. Um, all-star team. And again, this is Moon Knight number one. So this really tells, I believe it's his origin because Werewolf by Night 32 was uh, 
his first appearance, which is just him in the thing. I'm fairly, fairly confident this is the actual origin, the original yeah, origin of Moon so. Knight. I think so. So if anybody wants this, we're starting this bid at $1. Does it's also the first want- appearance of Herbert Walker Bushman, who was a president yes. in the United States, uh, 88 to 92. So. Yes, thanks, guys. Speaking <laughs> of uh, George H.W. Bush. But, guys, this book is best off for starting at $1. Does anybody want it for a dollar? It can be yours. It is Moon Knight number one. Again, it is the first appearance of Bushman, but it is a very early Moon Knight. It tells Moon Knight's origin. And we're offering this starting at $1 to anybody that wants it. And spot spotlighting the fist of Khonshu right there, you Yes. <laughs> Definitely the fist of Khonshu. Wait, wait, there we go. Come on, John. 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 I hate Moon Knight. No, come on, John. <laughs> He's like, I don't like Batman or any Batman derivatives. <laughs> I hate the guy. You're a guy in a cape. Sit down. All right. Well, if, does anybody want this for a dollar? It's best off for starting at one dollar. This reprints the first origin of Moon Knight. Um. Wow, Ron. Ron. I used to have the same thing with all these characters. These Batman, Batman derivative characters. I'm like. Cato would kick your ass, and and Green Hornet wouldn't even have to leave the car. Um, Patrick, Patrick, Ron is offering the sketch cover that he claimed to you if you want it. Oh wow, that's so, Ron, that's Patrick. If you want this for one twenty-five, type claim, and Ron will graciously offer this to you for one twenty-five um, if you want it. Um, yes, there's some so, yes. Mar- um, Patrick, let us know if you do want this for 125. Very gracious yeah, that claim awesome. that he's letting us do right here. If you, that's very nice of Ron. So, Patrick, let us know on that one. I wish they how much nicer everyone in the chat uh, is than I, I am. I know. Because I would never give up anything. I mean, the pride for my cold day. How nice can they be? They don't want that first moon night. They don't, they don't want the moon night origin for a dollar. It's only one dollar, one hundred pennies, one fifth of a five dollar bill. I'll give you a dollar to not show Batman derivatives again for the rest of the night. All right, so John is winning you a dollar. No. So uh, that I mean, if nobody wants it, guys, this is the best offer. So if you put in one dollar and nobody else gets it, then you win. Eleven nineteen eighty from November of nineteen eighty. This is. Moon Knight number one reprint for one dollar. I'm gonna tell you this too. If you've never read this early Moon Knight stuff, the Bill Sinkevich artwork, it's not the Bill Sinkevich that we know yet, but this is the run that where he gets there. And it's really cool to see yeah. some of this like early like Sinkevich stuff before he really kind of goes out. And yeah, like Dwayne said, it's it's a great entry point for a new reader. It's a perfect entry point for a new reader on Moon Knight. I mean, well, it's not quite New Mutants yet. No, you know but I mean? this is this is er, I mean, this is literally like one of the f- yeah. third appearance or fourth appearance of Moon Knight ever. But it's his origin. It's the origin. And I guess I did a bunch of Moon Knight reading before the show came out. All the origins from the late '80s when this happened to like the early 2000s, all they did was just expand the story. Just they, it just they filled in little gaps. You know. Layla, not Layla. Um, how did he get? The, I forget what happened specifically, but you know, when he gets to Egypt, they expand on why he was there in the first place. It all here is the base, and it's they don't redo the story. It's expansion of the story with, and they flesh it out. And again, that's his origin over twenty years. How do I know this? Not only did I read these, but I read all the handbooks for Moon Knight for DC, and all the handbooks they kept showing the original entry. And the new stuff was just additional content to space it, I mean, to add on to it. So if you watch the Moon Knight show and you have not read the original entry, literally one dollar. Perfect, guys. Dwayne appreciated it very much. Dwayne's in for a dollar. So unless anybody else wants to be crazy with two dollars or more, it's up, Carrie Quinn. Um, if anybody wants to be in for more than a dollar, perfect. But if not, Dwayne's got this for a dollar. And that's a great pickup there. Not going to lie, great pickup there. So 
with that, guys, we're gonna go to our we're gonna get ready for our break in a couple minutes. But before we do, we're gonna start with our next section, which is the dynamite books that comes that come out this week, that come out on Wednesday. And man, there are a lot of them. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you know that I've been breaking up the sets into showing all the individual issues. But instead of giant covers that you can't see too well, I'm trying something new. So chat, I hope you like this, because let's start with Vampirella 668. You know what? Look at that. How about the high definition, the image in high definition? Here you go. Vampirella 668. Luci Lucio Perillo. This is cover A, and it's $4.99. Vampirella 668, cover A, $4.99. Christopher Priest's new series that started with 666. If you guys did not read, did not pick up 666 or 667, don't worry. If you want 666 and 667 as well to go with your 668, we can pull them so there's no FOMO, so you get the whole story. So, just let us know if you want 666 and or 667 to get caught up. Marcus, definitely, but nice. But this is Vampirella 668 right here. And this is cover A by Lucio Porrio. How about cover B by Elias Chatzudiz? Elias Chatzudiz, very cool cover. It's very almost anime cartoony esque, but while still keeping the seriousness of Vampirella, Elias has been doing a great job. So, this is the cover B, Elias Chat Zudis. A little, little, little Campbell like, right? A little J. Scott yeah. Campbell in there a little bit? Yeah, this is not a lighthearted take on Vampirella. Uh, this this lady is Christopher Freestone. This is not a light party take. So for someone to do this cover, I think it's kind of cool. Ron, I got you there on the claim for Ho Thor Hercules. I almost combined the names. Thorcules? Hercules. <laughs> anyway, let's not go there. Uh, how about cover C? Carla Cohen. Cover C, Carla Cohen. Also $4.99. And look at that cover. Very nice, almost realistic cover. Skull in the background. What more can I say? Carla Cohen, $4.99 for that cover there. Um, cover D is Rachel Holland. It's the cosplay cover. Cover D is Rachel Holland. Cos What's up, mate, too? Um, cover D is cosplay cover. Um, but before we show that, uh, oh, there you go. Look at that. Look at that pose. It's a very supple, supple pose, I would say. You know what? That would be the cover Triple B is picking up, and I know that because if you watch his... his uh... There you go. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, Eddie Von B, hashtag EXP Josie. So, again, guys, this is $4.99. This is cover D, the cosplay. Rachel Holland cover there. Um, anybody wants that, let us know. Um, there are two more... Co <laughs> yes, 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 Dwayne. Uh, there are two more covers for 668. Just so you know, before he made that joke, Rachel made that joke. The chance we okay, okay. Joke. Uh, So before we show the two covers off, we've got one more break to go by. So when we come back, we'll show off the last two Vampirella 668 covers and the one, two, three, four, five other Dynamite books this week. It's going to be crazy. And then we have some back issues too. So stick around. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Don't go far. So, the show is called The Geek Chat, and really there's just a couple of geeks. I'm Rich. I'm Dez. And we are your hosts for this weekly guide into comic bookery and all the geeky stuff that goes with it. And that pretty much says it all. They talk about the latest movies and shows. Okay, I'll be completely honest with you. Overall, D-plus movie. So, the I end... Do uh, you know who that is? That's that's She-Ra. Yeah. Yes. The new number one comics of the week. We rep Sam Samuel Jackson and we rep Mace Windu. I passed on this. <laughs> I was like, no regrets. No regrets. I really wanted to like this book. I really, really, <gasps> really, really did. Like I really did. And just chat with each other and with you. Oh, Daniel says I dosed off with the first one. <laughs> I have zero interest in duh. 
The Joker Harley ship, not Harley herself. Enjoy nap for me. Yeah, yeah. this movie's going to be rough for me to sit through, I'll be honest. The Geek Chat, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Just a couple of honest geeks. Let's be honest. Come on. And that is why people watch us, because we're honest. Giving their honest opinion. And the thing you always have to remember about the internet is everyone has an opinion, and they all suck. Part of the experience. Imagine being at a convention and going to an interview panel that's just for you. No bustling crowds, no hours-long lines, just you, the moderator, and your favorite comic book creators. Well, this is pretty much that. Miss Jen sits down every week with two comic book creators for a live stream interview about their latest work, and you can ask them whatever you want. It's Talking Shop, Mondays at 5 Eastern on The Experience, Comic Culture and Sales. In a world where you hit like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. That'd be really great, thanks. Hello, we're still here. Hopefully you are too. But uh, yeah, we're here. So we got some Vampirella still going. Did we lose that? <laughs> Hello. I lost you, but we're here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. That was a very long pee break. I'm t- I apologize. <laughs> uh, how about Vampirella 668 cover E? Cover E. This is the Lucio Perillo limited virgin this is the virgin this is the rare cover for this new this new, this new issue this is the lucio Perillo virgin limited edition for 50 dollars. get out of here bro that cover ain't no virgin <laughs> uh that's 50 bucks this, one. this is the good <laughs> that's a, uh, no comment. what's up number number one marvel fan and finally, the last issue for this is Vampirella 668 cover M. This is the Lucio Perillo. This is the Ultraviolet. Ultra the Ultraviolet. This one is $4.99. So if you guys want any mix and match covers, they have $4.99 each for Vampirella 668, except for the, 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 Vir- the Virgin, which is $50. And that is 668 of Vampirella. You know, I, I just want to say this real quick. So like y'all, y'all had Hercules number one release last week. Got a lot of my customers that bought it and liked it. And they were like, what'd you think? And I was like, I didn't read it because I've never actually seen the Disney Hercules. And everybody kept telling me I needed to watch that movie because it's really good. And y'all mentioned it. Right. So I was digging through my collection and guess what I actually have. Nice. So I, I think I got to pull out the VCR. Is that and, the uh, Black I, Diamond? VHS. Is that, is that yeah. the Black Diamond? This is the Marvel or the or Marvel. This is the Disney Masterpiece Collection. Wait, show the si- show the spine, please. The spine. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Listen, Robbie. Yeah. It, it actually is a lot of fun. Um. Like James. Uh. James Spader. Um. James Woods. James Woods. James Woods is is Hades. He's and a great can, I, can I tell you like how much fun he is at like. It's so much fun. Like, it's it's a very fun movie. Um, so before you read, really it, kind of takes over that movie. And I love that. The 80s. He oh yeah, no. I mean, he, he, he steals the show. It's called Hercules, but yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's I mean, Hades really steals the show, and it's because he's, he's fun. Um, so I recommend even before you reading the show, reading the series is read the Hercules, read the Hades miniseries. Um, the Hades is a prequel. Um, Hercules is a sequel. It's a sequel. But I'm telling you, like, as a kid, Hercules was the one thing that I really, really wanted more content of. And, um, yeah, plus, it's the kind of thing they just the, sort of. The songs are good, too. Hercules was the thing they kind of almost inexplicably moved away from. 
And I don't know if it was because it wasn't typical Disney princess. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not quite sure what the reasoning was there, but I, I remember Hercules being very good, and then I mean, being gone. I have John John Goodman in my head as the Zeus. You know? Well, it, like, it, it, Hercules hit, had an impact, right? Because they had the uh, the the like the TV show and all that kind yeah. of stuff, right? And to answer Preston's question, I can't really, you know, speak on James Woods as as Hades in this movie, but man, Jeremy Irons as Scar, that's one of the best Disney villains, period, right there, y'all. Yeah, Scar and is, there's a Scar I mean, series out too that's I mean, it, really it, good by Chuck Brown that y'all do. It, so I mean, it, it's it's di it's different. Oh wait, we yeah, have Rip Torn. I'm sorry, I said John Goodman. Yeah, I, I remember. Oh, um, is when you have Disney stroking money, you get people to do this stuff, right? Like if you're a famous actor, everyone says the same thing. Why did they do this Disney stuff? Well, you know, I mean, because they got a house to pay for, and you know. You do one role with Disney, and it's crazy. I mean, the but he's there, but the, the, the Disney voices from their from their golden age, from, from the Renaissance. You know, I mean, listen. When I say John Ratzenberger, what do you think of? Cheers, by the way. Cheers. But you cheers, know, and I think of House Part Two. House Part Two. Thank you. <laughs> what you have here is your basic interdimensional. Uh... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you can dodge your hands. You can dodge yeah, like lightning bolt. bolt. No, but seriously, guys, if, if if you haven't seen Hercules, it's not your typical Disney princess movie. It's, I mean, it's not a Disney princess movie. It's a it's a historical movie almost. Um, it's a I'm Disney wondering. prince movie, right? Yeah. Did you say historical? This is yeah. based on history. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, I think you meant mythology. Now. Yeah, same. It's history. Listen, those before we get too far, though, I think we're going to having Rachel join us sometime because Rachel does streams on what other whatever. I'm sure you would love for Rachel to join you. Well, Rachel might actually talk. About yeah, no, that would be that would be cool um, if we can get her on stream that like, on camera with us uh, in, in studio, like um, when we have her books out. That'd be really cool. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to distract to detract from the show. I just wanted to show off my We've had creators join us in the studio. We have creators join us in the chat. I'm easily distracted, Robbie, so I blame you. Look over there. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Oh, um, so anyway, uh, speaking of Hercules, now we have it last week. It was great. So um, watch it. And when you're ready to talk about it, let me know. Because we'll go from zero to hero. There we go. All right. Evil Dead fans. Ready for this? Army of Darkness Forever, number seven, is out. So let's start with the amazing Bjorn Berens cover A. I was super excited when I heard that he was doing this cover. Co cover price is $4.99. Bjorn Berens cover A for this one. Look at that cover. Ash. It's just with his gun and his chainsaw hand. Beautiful yeah. cover right there. It's a great cover. It's a great book. And I'm going to say something that y'all can use as a pull quote if you want to. And I mean this from like 100% from the bottom of my heart. Best Army of Darkness comic I have ever read. Ooh. I don't know how you think about that. Oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with it, but I have to think about it. Are you reading this kind I'm kind of obligated. I'm the only person in the company that reads everything. <laughs> we, we, we know we have editors, right? Um, Bjorn Moran. Yeah, that's why I read everything. We know comic <laughs> editors don't read them. Come on. <laughs> I don't want to talk about what happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, Wheel of Time, number Nick, five. Uh, Nick, gets these, Nick gets these messages from me because I know he's up at 2 or 3 in the morning. And it always starts with, so I'm reading, dot, dot, dot. And I know on the other end of the phone, he briefly cringes like, uh. oh. I don't need to know this. So $4.99 for all these covers each. This is the Bjorn Berens cover. And if you don't want FOMO, we can pull issues one to six for you as well. Issue one, two, three, four, five, six. So you guys can read the and whole story. No lie, y'all. Like, no lie. We're not trying to oversell this, but like I think that this is because it's a direct sequel to the movie based yeah. on its theatrical ending. It's original alternate ending as well as continuing the story of the medieval time. So all three timelines working together, Tony Fleece is killing it. This book is amazing. Army of Darkness with... fans must read this book. Here's the deal with Army of Darkness, right? You've got its comedic side and its horror side. And Sam Raimi himself has said, this is like a delicate mix to get right. You get it right, it, it, it doesn't necessarily work. 
Some people prefer, you know, Bruce Campbell being a little bit more of the chin, right? And then there are other fans that really prefer him being like leaning more heavily into Ash. One of the criticisms were, for example, Stars had a Army of Darkness show a couple of years ago. And he wasn't really nearly as much Ash as he was Bruce Campbell just running through the show. Right. And I enjoyed I enjoy all that stuff. There's literally nothing from Army of Darkness I don't enjoy. But I think here Tony Fleeks kind of tries to strip all that stuff away and says, let me put myself in the mindset of when Army of Darkness was in the theater. And then move forward from there. And I don't know if I can't think of another writer off the top of my head that has done that that well recently, if that happens. Um, I, and I really, we've had Tony I on. We've had Tony on pop culture philosophers a few times over the last several months, and we we keep talking about this book. And you can tell he's got a passion for it, just like Joe Casey has got a passion for Johnny Quest, and that passion translates yes. to great books. Yeah, I like I said, I just I just read the uh, I just read the the Johnny Quest Zero. Uh, you can tell you can tell by the second third panel that Joe Casey has watched pretty much every episode of the cartoon, read every comic he could find. Uh, just, you know, like creators, some creators get it and some don't. And I don't necessarily mean that, you know, sometimes you want someone who isn't a hardcore fan to do the work because you're trying to achieve something different. Star Trek is like that. There are Star Trek comics where they're trying to do something different and the Star Trek fans don't like it. I don't want to talk about Trek. They just cancel Lower Decks. And then they just... Well, it's like they cancel it after no, five seasons. No, they canceled it. <laughs> oh, no. it's, it was the best thing they had. Yeah. Well, Strange New Worlds is the best thing they had. They're going to do season. Yeah, well, that's the only thing that's left. Anyway, I um, like to go rewatch DS9. That's all you got to do. So you're I right. do. All, all I'll tell you is if they cancel Lower Decks as an animated series, I'm fine with that because I want them to be a Lower Decks live uh, action series. I want them to be a comic book. And by the way, if, if you guys. Have not well, read the, there was a three issue uh, miniseries of Lower Decks, and when I tell you that, like, you, you say how Joe Casey gets that. Yep. The writer it was um, Chris Finoglio. The Dracula um, out of the holodeck. He. <laughs> well, great. The, what, what they do is it's it's so on point for Lower Decks. Like, there's there's writing in every single margin. There's writing. Like it's meta, like some, yeah. like 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 Boimler, yeah, the, Eddie. They did not renew it for after season five, unfortunately. Um, so it's like Boimler is commenting on everything. Mission. They're only supposed to be five. So anyway, and Paramount Plus is restructuring. Here. Paramount Plus is restructuring some stuff too, so maybe a part of that. I can totally see where, yeah, Paramount Plus. People don't know where that's going to go. Um, I thought Paramount Plus was much further along as a streaming service. Uh, it is not. It is not where they want it to be. It's not even where they wanted it to be three or four years ago. So, yeah, there's going to be changes coming there. So I can understand where they're not really served kind of going with long-term projections when you have no idea. I mean, the way things change now, you know, yeah. you have no idea. You know, they might be owned by Warner Brothers. Like, you literally have no idea. Who's going to pick? It could be on Apple. So um, let's continue with cover B for Army of Darkness because this cover is really cool. It's the Arthur Soydum. Arthur Soydum cover. Shania? Yep. Zombies indeed. Oh, yes, Becky. I just mentioned you had a few books. Hey, Becky. You had books a little while ago. that Those are the kind of books that Becky always picks up. Fun. Uh, fill in, filling in her, uh, like when you do like runs. Of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Becky's been buying yeah, a ton Becky, of Becky, stuff. Becky really fills in her runs. Um, with that, and I think that's cool. So we got cover B Arthur Soyden for $5. How about Tony Fleeks cover himself? Cover C Tony Fleeks right there. Very cool green tint. Um, and Tony Fleeks is a name when people talk about double threats in comics, like who are the greatest, you know, artists and writers. You know, the names like John Byrne, I like these names are thrown around. I don't think Tony Fleek's name gets mentioned enough, maybe because he hasn't had quite so many years yet. But I think Fleek's is as talented a writer, an artist, as he is a writer. And oh, yeah. I think that probably doesn't get the top Plus, of that. I mean, Farrell has been amazing. Um, well, I'll tell you real, very quickly, my wife picked up an issue of Stray Dogs. And she saw dogs, cute dogs on the cover and thought it would be fine. 
and I didn't get a chance to explain to her, look, this isn't a cutesy comment. The dogs are cute, but this isn't. And literally, she picked it up, and she went, oh, oh. And she, like, she threw it halfway across the room, like, oh, God, oh, God. And I'm like, yeah, the dogs kind of get into like that, stuff. That like, scene where the guy goes, snap, that's all I'll say. She, just, she saw the cute cover and thought it was going to be something very different. And I had to tell her, I was like, I love this story. I love this creator. And I love these dogs. Not this for is you. not for you. Finally, we got cover D, Chris Burnham. Cover D is Chris Burnham. Look at that cover. Really cool right there. Oh, cool, Again, four ninety nine <laughs> each on all those. So right there, that's Army of Darkness. The older I get, the more identified with old man Ash. <laughs> we got chance on your hand. Uh, moving on to James Bond, 007. Just one cover. Here we go. Number four, James Bond, 007. Number four, and this is the Dave Johnson cover. This is four ninety nine, but if you missed out, we can pull an issue one second print because issue one did sell out. Issue one sold out, so we can pull you an issue one second print, a two and a three as well. But this is issue four for five dollars. If you want to be caught up, we can catch you up as well. Just let us know. But this is the Dave Johnson cover, Garth Ennis. Right here, writing the story. If you for James are a Bond. James Bond fan, Dynamite Comics should be your best friend. Because the stuff that Dynamite has done in the last 10 years ish with 007, um, I will put that story wise up against a significant amount of the movies that they've done recently. Um, and I, 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 you know what I mean? I, 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 the classic stuff is a little bit different, right? I mean, things like Goldfinger kind of tend to be in their own category, but some of the later movies they've done, I don't know if their stories are as strong as some of the stuff that has been done in the comic. Um, all right, let's move on to Elvira meets HP Lovecraft. Elvira's back. This is issue number three of Elvira. And this is cover A by Dave Acosta. Covers are four ninety nine each. So this is cover A, Dave Acosta. How about cover B by Cooper Ball? Cover B is Cooper Ball. Um, cover C is Robert Hack with the prose novel s cover. This is the very classic book last co- book version cover. Robert and people Hack did when Dynamite did Dark Shadows years and years ago. One of the he, he did this for one of those covers, too. So it was amazing. A lot of good positive reviews on this cover. Cover C, Robert Hack. But, of course, we have cover D, which is the Elvira photo cover. There's many good reasons. I'm sure there's two good reasons right there for Elvira. Photo cover, issue number three, cover D. That's all I'll say. It's cover D. There's just one D there. Uh, that's $5 for the photo cover. And finally, how about the Dave Acosta limited version? This is cover E, or sorry, yeah, cover E. This is the $50 limited version. This is the vegan, the virgin. This is the limited version, Dave Acosta, right there. All right, it's Disney time. Let's start with Justice Ducks. Justice Ducks number two is here. We're going to plan this out differently because that's too much of a gear shift from Elvira and H.P. Lovecraft to Disney Time. I don't know. I'm sorry. Listen, (laughs) that part's over. Let's do Disney Time now. Disney Time here. Justice Ducks number two. This series continues the Darkwing Duck series. This is cover A by Jay Lee for $3.99. Cover A is Jay Lee, $3.99. Cover B is Roger Landridge. Cover B is Roger Landridge, and that is also $3.99. Cover C is Francesco Tomaselli. Cover C is Francesco Tomaselli. If you like candles that are shaped like a duck, like duck candles, there you go. (laughs) And finally, cover D is, look at that, Trish Forstner right there. Cover D Trish Forstner, that is $3.99 each. Again, those are the Justice Ducks. If you missed out on issue one, we can pull issue one for you as well so you are caught up and haven't missed anything. Again, this is Justice Ducks, number two, for $3.99. Um, Nega Duck is a separate miniseries. What did you say? 
I'm just going to say there's no negative duck covers. No, no negative duck covers. These are Justice Ducks. Justice Ducks. Finally, the last new Diamond issue. And this is the big one for the week. It's finally here. Everyone's been waiting for this book to drop. And it is finally, finally here. Gargoyles Quest number one. Demona's Quest with the amazing Clayton Crane cover. The amazing Clayton Crane cover. This is $4.99. This is cover A. Clayton Crane's cover is $4.99. Start the series off right with this issue here. How about cover B? Cover B is Jay Lee's cover. Look at that awesome cover. Cover B is Jay Lee. Now, I'm going to pop over the next few covers and go right to the website exclusive, and you'll see why in a second. How about cover O? Cover O, which oh, is no. – there you go. Look at that beautiful transition. Cover O is the Dynamite.com website exclusive. This is the J. Lee Line Art Virgin. There are only 100 copies total of this, and they are $20 each. You heard me. Only 100 copies total. They are $20 each. This is the most limited version cover of this book. $20 each. That's a fantastic copies. price for such a limited cover, man. Yeah. Jay Lee's line art right here. These come with COA and sticker. These are the dynamite.com website exclusives. These are super duper limited. I now, I'm buying 100 of these and it's sitting on them. Yeah. But here's the thing waiting. as a special, though, I, you cannot claim these from us. But on the website, we have this signed by Jay Lee also, limited to 50. Sorry, limited to 20 copies. 20 copies signed by Jay Lee. And also, Jay, if you could throw cover A back up one second, please. Cover A. Guys, we have 50 copies signed by Greg Wiseman, the creator. Now, unfortunately, you cannot claim them through us because these are still in the process of being signed. So you have to order these two through the website. But the regular version, the regular cover O, which is the website exclusive, the regular cover O, this is available right now for $20. If anybody wants one, there are only 100 copies total. So we're going to go through the rest of the covers really quickly. How about cover C, which is Drew Moss. Cover C, showing off Lexington. That is Lexington. That is $5. Drew Moss, cover Lexington. How about the blank cover? Guys, the blank, which is E. Draw whatever you want to your heart's desire. This is cover E, the blank, for $5. Draw whatever you want. And as a special, we also have a limited um, stone gray blank. A limited stone gray blank. That's cover K. And this is also $4.99. Again, stone gray blank and the regular blank. The final, final book of the night is Gargoyles Quest number one, cover F. This is the Clayton Crane limited virgin cover. This is $50. This is the rare one, the limited one. Um, the website exclusive is still lower print run. But this is the open order release where only uh, – it's very limited. It's the Virgin. Mr. Towers claims an O. Awesome. Um, and this is the Virgin for Quest 1. It is the Clayton Crane, and that is $50 there. So, guys, we appreciate you watching. Anything that's been shown on tonight's show uh, is available on the rewatch. So if you're not watching this live, um, BBB is claiming still waiting for those Robbie covers. Um, you can't rush genius. Guys, as long as the books are available, if you're watching on the rewind, just fill out the form. Um, and Jay, just sticky that form one more time, just so it's there. Please fill out the claim form. It's so important because we need your information. So please fill out the form. And a couple things to do. We have a giveaway. Yep. 
gotta find out what Robbie's doing. We gotta find out what's yeah. next on the experience. And with that, this, this is our final call for the giveaway. Hashtag EXP Josie. So in the next minute, while you guys fill this out for the last time, EXP Josie, Robbie, what do you have coming up? Well, we got PCP Movie Night at 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're talking about one of the greatest filmmakers in cinema history and one of his best movies. We're talking about Yojimbo from Akira Kurosawa starring Toshiro Mifune. Fantastic movie. It's going to be a great conversation. Um, Jay, what do we have tonight on the EXP coming up? So at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, we're going to have the Devil's Advocates and I'll just show you the thumb because I, I'd like to know this, the answer to this question too. Did you create this guy? Did Robbie? Uh, did John? Did I? Who the hell knows anymore? But tune in and find out. If you, if you guys don't know what's going on, um, just Google Roy Thomas Wolverine or Hulk One Eighty One Wolverine, and you'll see the controversy going on. Not so much controversy, just you know, yeah, controversy. It's controversy. Uh, that's a great. That's a great topic <laughs> to talk about. Finally, guys. That's what I was thinking. What? Wait, what? E X P J O S I E. We'll give it another ten seconds, and we'll run this. But again, enter to win for a free giveaway. It's Invincible Red Sony Number One, the Gem Mint exclusive by his daughter Jade Hope. And with that, let's run. <laughs> let's run the giveaway. Spin that wheel. Big bucks, no whammies. E X P Josie, who's got it right there? That is Let's see. Survey says winner goes to Mr. Easy. Hey, go go congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Please fill out the form. Kenneth, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate every single person watching, every taking the time, one. every single, including All you, right. take the time to watch or even be here in person. Most importantly, please. Follow Robbie if you haven't already. Like his videos. Thumbs up on our videos. Make sure you're following us on the EXP. We've got um, Facebook. We've got YouTube. We've got Twitter. No, not Twitter. We've got Twitch, I mean. And we've got Instagram. So make sure you follow us on Instagram. Triple B is a very cool um, unboxing video he does. Also, check us out on Discord. We have a Discord as well. Yes, Triple B. Check out Triple B's unboxing. I have to make a boxing video. Uh, of me putting together a mystery box for Lars Man. It's going to be a nice one two punch. A boxing and an unboxing. That's what we need to see, right? I back to wait. back. So, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys I need have to do an unboxing of like whiskey, need anything, let us know. But if not, may the force be with you, and we'll see you soon. Good night, everyone. We know you probably get a lot of emails, but could you please make sure to sign up for our mailing list? We don't send a lot of emails, and we try not to bother you. We just want to give you the best information about all the cool stuff that's going on around here. Sign up on our website, theexplive.com.